Good morning, Mario, and good morning, Switch fans. First off, check out my mug. Uh, it's a Game Boy mug, and the screen lights up as the tea fills up. You can tell I'm about down to here with the tea because the screen's starting to, to shut off. But this is in honor of the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance coming to Switch Online. Hope you all have been having fun with it. While I've been away, I took a couple days off, but I'm back in the saddle, and we got a lot to talk about. So what's going on, everybody? It's Agnes Switch Wars. Hope you're all doing fantastic. I'm kicking it off with some brand new breaking news. The biggest, baddest DLC to ever release for Nintendo is coming out February 28th. They just announced that literally the stupidest DLC ever, Splatoon 3's Wave 1 Angopolis expansion is out February 28th. I know, I know. Splatoon is great. The whole expansion pack is going to be great. But this first wave allowing you to relive Splatoon 1 when it wasn't even that long ago that you could walk around Splatoon 1. But oh wait, we're not bringing in any of the weapons or any of the stages. We're just, just, just skin swap where you start. The items will be the same across shops. It's not even like the shops have their own pick. The, the, the creatures that live in the shops don't even get to select their own wares. It's the same stuff. It's literally just a squint, a squid squap. It's a skin squap. It's a skin swap. <laughs> All up in my brain with them, octopi and squidlings. But I think this is stupid, but it is coming out on February 28th. So you will be rewarded for your expansion pass pickup soon. We'll check it out because I'm getting the expansion pass for the second half, which is the like single player expansion. And it does look cool, so we'll give it a look on February 28th and see if it's worth any more than the worst DLC of all time, which is kind of what I kind of what I predict it to be. Next up, if any of y'all have been playing Metroid Prime Remastered, oh, I'll have a full video on it, but oh, I can't believe it. I'm, I'm literally in shock. I'm in stasis. I'm the... Anyhow, if you haven't played it, wait for that video. Jeff Grubb is back on... The feel good train i guess you know he got his metroid prime remastered out there he's been redeemed at least a little bit remember his whole metroid prime wind waker twilight princess none of it happened fiasco now people are bringing back things he said around the original prediction about metroid prime remastered and back then jeff grubb said that metroid prime 2 and metroid prime 3 would also both be coming to switch but not be full remasters like metroid prime 1 and that was resurfaced to jeffy grubb and he said correct my Valentine is anyone like Max here who accurately relays things that I've said. And so we will eventually, according to Jeff, be getting Metroid Prime 2 and 3, but they won't be remasters. Now, obviously the graphics improved as we went to Prime 2 Echoes and Prime 3 Corruption, but Metroid Prime 1 looks hot. And I will be very sad if they don't at least put a little bit of juice into the graphical upgrade for these two games. Now, I'm not sure what not fully remastered means? Are they just going to throw them up there in the same way that they just threw up Mario Sunshine from the GameCube as part of 3D All-Stars collection? Or will they touch them up a bit? Since they're already releasing Metroid Prime Remastered physically, I can't see them doing a collection of the three. I think they'll sell these two separately. So my hope is that while maybe the remaster isn't as much of an uptick due to Metroid Prime being the oldest of the three, there still will be an improvement, a noticeable change in the graphics and a noticeable change. Because let me tell you, this now is one of my most anticipated things. Getting Prime 2 and Prime 3 Corruption on the Switch is one of my most anticipated things. Please stay tuned for my Metroid Prime video. Oh my god. Like literally, when Metroid Prime Remaster was like, oh, it's out today. I was like, that's really cool. An old game that people can relive if they're big fans. I did not know that we were getting one of the best Switch games for $40. It is insane. Okay, check out my full video, please. There's a lot of love that's going into that end of this game. Uh, I want to instead take you to something very interesting, which is Nintendo talking about how long the Switch is going to go. We talked about this many times. Like, what are they doing? Are they slowing down? Is there a pro? Are they just waiting for Switch 2? Are they shutting down the company? Like, what's happening? There's so many options out there. Nintendo Switch is coming up on its seventh year, and they say, President Furukawa says, that they're in uncharted territory. In the history of their video game platforms, this is uncharted territory that a system is continuing to do this well, this long into its life cycle. And because of that, here's the, the real headline. Under these circumstances, it's hard to imagine that hardware sales will continue to grow at the same pace they have to date. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. However, Furukawa continues, there are titles under development for Nintendo Switch and new titles will continue to be proposed going forward. Furukawa is indicating that there are current Switch games in development and Switch games that are still in the proposal phase that they will take and bring to Switch. So this actually gives you some good information. It tells you one of two things that's very important. A, Nintendo is not going to be moving to a Switch 2 and just will be making an 
incremental upgrade to a Switch Pro. Therefore, things they propose on Switch will also work on Switch Pro. Or Switch 2 will be the same as Xbox Series X is to Xbox One in that everything just scales. The fact that they're gonna be still taking proposals for Switch games when we know, when we know that this thing is coming to an end, when we know that there's gotta be a new console, it means that backwards compatibility and cooperative cohesion between the units is almost guaranteed. Now you could say, well, maybe they're just not releasing a new system. Nintendo is working on the next thing. Like that's inevitable. We've seen their research and development dollars. We know this is a company that does not stand pat. They're always at least doing something. But I think this is actually bigger news than it's being reported as because they are basically indicating a universal platform. Now that's really great news, especially for a company that has wobbled on their accessibility for consumers. They shut down eShops. They made things region locked then region free. There's a lot of concern with the online nature of many of their titles that they just poof and go away. And now our virtual console games, we're reliant on their apps, their N64 app, their SNES app, now their GBA app. And so the fact that Nintendo seems to be moving in this very unified system forward future is actually a brilliant move. It's actually very fan centric. It's actually very great for us. And whenever they decide to bring out the next system or the next incremental upgrade or the next pro or the next whatever, it sounds like Furukawa and Nintendo are really focused on keeping things an ecosystem. And I think that's really important. We know that the Switch factor is not going away. Nintendo isn't going to suddenly release a new thing. They're like, well, that was a fun run. Forget the handheld. Like this is now their pillars unified and they will keep it that way. But even more so, allowing games to scale, while there are some drawbacks, we can get into those at a later date, there's so much good to be gained. The good to be gained is that the platforms last. And even if you have a Switch and aren't able or choose not to upgrade, you still could get access to a big, beautiful game. So if Mario Kart 9 releases on Switch 2 in all 4K beauty, you probably could still play it on Switch 1 at 720p. If Mario Odyssey 2 comes out on Switch Pro, you'll still be able to play it on your Switch, albeit maybe without as many flourishes. That to me is really great for fans. It's really great for us. And it promises that the Switch is more than just Nintendo's video game platform of the now. It is their video game platform of the future, and it is their their video game platform, like capital T-H-E-I-R, their video game platform. This is it. The Switch is Nintendo now, and I think that's freaking great. So let me know what you think in the comments down below, everybody. I love you so much. I'm glad to be back. It was a good little break. Sometimes we gotta just take those. Uh, the Game Boy screen is shut off. Have y'all been playing any Game Boy stuff on Switch? I hope so. I got to get into it. Like I said, Metroid Prime is coming your way soon. That, I feel great to be a gamer. And if you know me, you know, in my 13 year YouTube career, I've had ups and downs of like loving games. And then sometimes you just hate them. Sometimes you just get so frustrated with your job and with everything, it becomes hard. And I'm in a really great spot where I'm loving stuff. There's too much to play. I can't wait. I'm downloading a new game right now. I'm supposed to be playing another Switch exclusive soon. I'm really excited. I'm happy to be here. And that means more great content for you, more high fives for us and love all around. So stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive out there, people. Love you so much. Till next time, Switch Force, out.